What is going on, familia? You're listening to the Carlos Whitaker Podcast. This is episode 30, where we're unpacking the statement, don't stand on issues, walk with people. Put the needle on the record, and the drum beat goes like this. Now, uh, yeah, I was a little late on that, but I still made it work because I am a professional rapper. We're going to hit pillar number three this week. The pillar of don't stand on issues, walk with people. What are the pillars that hold that statement up? Welcome to the Carlos Whitaker Podcast. I'm so excited that you're here. The last few weeks, we've been unpacking the six pillars of don't stand on issues, walk with people. Pillar number one, we seek understanding, not victory. What does that mean? We prioritize listening and learning over winning arguments. We believe both are possible. We hold our beliefs fiercely, but we hold them with open hands and not clenched fists. That was number one. Rewind two weeks ago. And you'll be with me as we unpack that. Oh, there's a breakdown. This is what it actually feels like when you walk with people. It feels like this, these 12 seconds right now. Mm, So good. Pillar number two, we hold conviction alongside compassion. What does that mean? We hold our principles passionately, but we also acknowledge the humanity of those who disagree. We reject the false choice between unwavering principles and genuine human connection. And then the third principle we're unpacking today, we walk alongside, not ahead or behind. I'm telling you, this is so important. This is one of the more important, um, this is one of the more important attributes of walking with people because I just feel like this is the part where I get DMs from people that are like, Carlos, I just can't walk with this person. I just can't, I can't, they dehumanize me. They do, dehuman- you know, so what does it really mean to walk alongside somebody that um, maybe you see things differently? You have a different worldview. Uh, you know, this week, I, I mean, let, let's just, let's take, for example, What does it look like to walk alongside somebody when something happens? So like this week, new vice presidential candidate um, is announced with Vice President Kamala, right? So the announcement happens and immediately what happens is, you know, when you look on Twitter and you look on Facebook and Instagram, Tim Waltz's name is announced. And suddenly what happens is, people immediately begin to just either build him up or tear him down. There's no in between. I I need, I need everybody to understand this. Uh, Please send, please send something to me where, where um, it's not either building him up or tearing him down. If you've seen it, because I haven't, that there was, there's been really no nuance. Actually, that's not true. I'm well, like, like Sharon, uh, McMahon, she, she simply announced, um, who he was, right? Her post, Tim Waltz's Kamala Harris is picked for vice president. Waltz is a longtime teacher and current governor of Minnesota. That's all she said. And she put his picture up and you go in the comments and you know, even somebody that's just making a statement or a fact, suddenly it's building up or tearing down, building up or tearing down. So what I want us to see first and foremost is Walking alongside people probably doesn't happen a lot on the internet. You probably have to do that with your own two legs. It's, it's difficult online to walk alongside somebody because we either want to walk ahead or we want to walk behind. And I'm going to tell you what the difference is between walking ahead and walking behind is. Um, but Tim, Tim, just, just watching the rollout of the vice pres- presidential candidate was just kind of a little bit eye-opening for me going like, ah, okay. It's either one or the other. It's either tearing down or building up. Nobody can, I I have yet to see somebody that's like, these are the good things. These are the things uh, that I struggle with. I've yet to see that. I'm sure it's out there, but it's definitely not the norm. So how do we do this? You know, how do we, how do we lock, walk alongside somebody that, you know, maybe you've got friends, um, when this announcement happened, I I actually got, got a DM, like one particular DM that was like, 
um, Carlos, just, you don't have to make this public. Just please tell me, please tell me for my own sake, you're not voting for the ticket with Tim Waltz. Walls, sorry. <laughs> Brittany Pacchetti said yesterday, <laughs> she, <laughs> hold on, I gotta find it. I keep calling him Waltz. I swear she said this. Hang on. This is hilarious. Uh, Brittany, oh, come on. Uh, please tell me it wasn't on her story and it disappeared. Here it is. It's a meme of, um, it's a meme of President George W. And, um, you know, he's looking to the side. This is when 9-11 happened and, and his uh, person whispers in his ear that there was an attack on the way, right? He's, he's got that serious look in his face. And um, the whisper that the meme says is the blacks have already added a T to Tim Wall's name. It's so true. I can't. The blacks have already added a T to Tim Walls name. Tim Waltz. It's Waltz. We. It just. It's not coming out. Walls. Uh, I just thought that was funny. If you guys didn't think that was funny, I apologize. Um. Okay. Let, let's get into it. Let, let's just. Let's dive right in. Enough chit chat. What does it look like for us to walk alongside, not ahead or behind? Unpacking that statement initially. Let's. Let's. Let's just say what I stated just in the sentence or two describing that on my Insta post a couple weeks ago. Walk alongside, not ahead or behind means we acknowledge the complexities of human experience. We understand that the path to a better future is paved with diverse perspectives. Diverse perspectives can cover race, ideology, religion, ethnicity, culture, lived experience, expertise, career, gender, age, generation, education, location, just to name a few. So th those are diverse perspectives, right? Those are all the things that can be diverse that what's it going to look like to walk alongside. So let, let's just think about the idea of walking next to somebody. Okay. So, so just picture yourself for a second. You're going on a walk with a friend. Okay. You're having a conversation, right? You're having a conversation. Where are you in relation to that person when you're having a conversation? Where are you? Think about it. You're probably imagining yourself right alongside them. Okay. Why? It's not rocket science. Because it's impossible to have a conversation if one of you is ahead and one of you is behind. You know, there, there's been times when Heather and I have been backpacking and we're talking next to each other. The path is wide. When the path gets narrow... And one of us has to choose to go ahead and behind. We kind of stop talking. Why? Because then now we've got to yell and we got to turn around. And we it, it gets dangerous, or we just the conversation just doesn't flow anymore. So I'm sure you've been you've you've experienced a moment where you've been walking with somebody, uh, and then maybe you you get a little faster than them, and you know, and then you're just like, oh my gosh, I wish I wish they would just keep up. Or maybe somebody walks a little faster than you. And all you can focus on at that point is keeping up with them. Suddenly the point isn't conversation anymore. The point is just keeping up with them and you're out of breath. Just think about this. You're not able to listen well because you're not able to hear well. Maybe you're even a little annoyed because they obviously don't care that they're leaving you in the dust. That, that bothers you. Or maybe, again, you're the faster walker. And you're annoyed that your friend can't keep up with you. Have you ever thought about all the feelings that happen when you walk with a friend? <laughs> Maybe you haven't until right now. The Whitakers have a new favorite pan to fry our eggs. That is right. It is from our place. Our place is an incredible company that is leading the charge, leading the charge in creating cookware that is healthy for you. Did you know that most cookware and appliances are made with forever chemicals literally inside of them? Our Place is a mission-driven and female-founded brand that makes beautiful kitchen products that are healthy and sustainable. Most cookware brands continue to use chemicals that are unhealthy for us due to their low cost, but Our Place is leading the charge. Our Place legitimately is PFAS-free. 
Okay. PFAS free in comparison to most of today's nonstick pans that contain PFAS. And we don't want that in our stuff. Okay. They're called forever chemicals. Our place does not use those. And so we have been using this nonstick pan that we love. And I know Heather's already ordered a few more. So listen, when you're looking for a company that you know isn't going to harm you as you're cooking your food, our place is the one. So this is what I want you to do, okay? Go to fromourplace.com and enter my code CARLOS at checkout to receive 10% off site-wide. That's fromourplace.com code CARLOS. Our place offers a 100-day trial with free shipping and returns. It's incredible. See you guys over there at fromourplace.com. Indeed is the place to hire where all the drama gets taken away. Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. That's incredible. One of the things I love about Indeed is their user interface. Trust me, you've been hearing me talk about Indeed for so long because it actually works. Sometimes I just go on there for fun, dreaming about who is it I'm going to hire next. And I see these incredible, incredible people that have uploaded their resumes. It's just a lot of fun. If you're looking to hire, you need Indeed. And listeners of the show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your job more visibility at Indeed.com slash human hope. Just go to Indeed.com slash human hope right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash human hope. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. So, I think one of the biggest things we've got to understand when you walk alongside, not in front or behind, is we have to pace ourselves. You have to pace yourself. When we walk alongside, we have to pace ourselves with the person that we're walking with. Whether it feels like our natural pace or not, right? There's give and take. And ultimately, you'll arrive at your destination together. I just remember we'd go to Radnor. Heather's actually hiking Radnor right now with the kids when they were little. And I, I would want to walk faster than their little femurs would let them walk. Because it wasn't just their femurs. And I'd have to pace myself to the pace of my kids or else I'd leave them in the dust. When I walk with Heather, she walks up the hills way faster than I do. I walk down the hills way fast, faster than she does. But one of us is always slowing down for the other. Always. Pacing ourselves is so true. You guys, you guys know, um, have you ever seen a marathon? Have you ever run a marathon? There are pace setters that have little signs that if you're trying to run a seven minute mile, a six minute, 30 second mile, a six minute mile, there's little pace setters that have signs that they are running at that pace. And so you have found, you find the one that you can keep up with. Now it's not the pace setter's job to slow down because the whole point is you want to, you want to train yourself to run at a certain pace. That's a whole other part of the conversation we're going to get to at the end, but just know that pace is important. So let, let's, let's think for a second. What does it look like to walk ahead? When, when you're the one that's ahead, you're the one that's annoyed that they can't keep up. This is, this is how you're going to be able to tell if you're walking ahead of somebody instead of with them. Okay. Walking ahead can look like what going after what benefits you without caring about how it affects the people behind you. Ooh. How, how does that play out in your relationships with people? When, when you're like, you know what? Um, they're just going to have to deal with it. Like I'm faster and this is actually going to benefit me. And you know what? I think it's going to benefit them, uh, but I'm not even going to ask them if they want to walk fast or not. How has this played out? How has this ever played out in your world where somebody else has stopped caring about what benefits you? They only cared about what benefits them in the conversation. That's one way that walking ahead looks like. Another way, uh, using sarcasm or being condescending, belittling the other person. That means you're walking ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I've got, I've got some friends that, oh my gosh, 
sarcasm is like their spiritual gift. And I'm telling you, sarcasm, it, you, the only reason we do that is because we are unsure of ourselves and it makes us feel better um, about ourselves. Never makes us feel better about the other person or never makes the other person feel better about themselves. Sarcasm doesn't do that. Um, yeah, it's fun every once in a while. It's funny. Uh, but if, if that's something that's normal for you, again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just letting you know in a, in a healthy way, because I love you, um, that if you have more sarc, if sarcasm is the way you are humorous, um, just dig a little and slow down your pace because you're ahead of everybody else that's trying to have conversations with you. Carrying a superiority or savior complex. You know, this is a, this is a big one. Like, um, if you feel like you, you have the answer and you are going to be the savior of the person that you're having a conversation with, if you walk in with that sort of idea, then you're, you're walking ahead again. This is how you know that you're walking ahead. You're, you're kind of a know-it-all. You don't take time to listen or learn from others. You are the expert. You are the, you've watched a 10 minute YouTube video, um, on, you know, the geopolitical moment or issue at hand. And because you've memorized a few talking points from that, you, you now know. And so you walk in the conversation, you know, it all that means you're walking ahead. I, I can get like this when it comes to compassion, I can get like, because I'm a very compassionate individual. And so when I'm talking to somebody that lacks compassion, I can walk ahead of them by almost talking down to them about their lack of compassion. Um, even sometimes the way I just look at them can be walking ahead. What are ways I can slow down in my pace to walk alongside? So that's what it looks like to walk ahead. What does it look like to walk behind somebody? Okay. So, you know, you're the pace setter in a conversation. Um, you you want to walk with, but then you start getting a little ahead. We know what that feels like now. But if you're walking behind, what does that look like? Well, it can look like uh, letting other people take the brunt of an issue, right? When you know that your engagement could literally lessen their load. 2021, I had a lot of people that were walking behind that could have walked with. I was kind of out in front taking the the brunt. Bam, 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 bam. Oh man, I'm saying that I'm offending people here because I'm speaking for truth. I'm speaking for justice. And a lot of people that could have been alongside me were just behind me kind of being like, whoa, this is really nice that Carlos is taking the brunt. Well, Carlos, I don't really understand. You know what? Even if you don't understand, you can still walk alongside somebody and help them take a little bit of the brunt. Take a little bit of the pain. Um, yeah. That's what walking behind, it can literally look like letting somebody else take that. How can you speed up your pace a little bit, especially if you're walking behind, not because they're walking too fast, but because you don't want to take the brunt of what they're taking. That's a big one. How else does it look like if you're walking behind? It can look like blindly following someone without taking the time to figure it out yourself. Great, great example right now. 2024 presidential elections. My children are all of the age of voting now. I've got three voters, two first time voters. Do you know what I've done? It's very easy for me to, as a dad to just declare who I want them to vote for as, you know, as the leader of this family. I um, am going to just declare that this is who we are voting for. My wife is just as much a leader as I am, and she could declare the same thing. Or I can be like, hey, listen, you know what? I don't want there to be any weirdness. I know that you are all building your own worldviews. I know that you all care about things, but I also know that you care about me and that I've poured a lot into who you are. And so you probably believe some of the things I believe, but there may be some new belief systems that are growing inside of you because you are now out in the world um, seeing things with your own eyes. So you know what? Let me tell you. Here are some reasons that people would vote for Donald Trump. And here are some reasons that people would vote for Kamala Harris. And here are some reasons why people would not vote for Donald Trump. 
And here are some reasons why people would not vote for Kamala Harris. And list those things out. I'm actually working on this right now for my kids. Um, And give it to them and say, listen, I love you. And I trust you are going to make the right decision um, for who you are. And also, I want to let you know that your decision to vote for who you're going to vote for as president is not near as important as who you're going to vote for in our local elections, because that's going to affect you even more. So I don't want to just see you voting when it's time to vote for the president, but I need to see you voting for our city council, for our school board, and all the other things locally that will affect us as a family. That right there, that right there, I believe is going to be um, very helpful for my kids and walking alongside them instead of behind them or in front of them. Just ways I think that we can do this. Um, Choosing not to speak up when you know you should. Again, this is walking behind. Not taking other people's thoughts or concerns seriously. That's walking behind. We don't walk ahead. We don't walk behind. We walk alongside. How do we walk alongside? Acknowledge that everyone has something to offer. Everyone, every single person. You can learn something from everyone. Everyone. Has has everyone ever had four syllables? Well, it does now. Understand that even the person that you disagree with the most, you can still learn something from. You can. We can. Once I think once we understand that and we acknowledge that, that everyone has something to offer, it's a lot easier to walk alongside somebody. You know, did I already mention this story? I um, <laughs> I have a friend, one of my best friends in the world, um, is real big MAGA. We don't see eye, eye to eye on a lot of things, um, you know, politically speaking. But I, I walk alongside him all the time. And he showed up to soccer game with his MAGA hat on. Um, and I was sitting right next to him. And uh, he's like, he's like, put it on. I said, okay, I put the hat on and I smiled for him and I gave it back to him. He's like, I can't believe you put the hat on. I was like, just because I put that hat on doesn't mean that I, I believe what you believe, but I'm walking alongside you. If that's going to make you feel better about our relationship, I'm going to put it on for a second. Did it make me feel a certain way? No, nah, man, it's just a hat. Um, but I walked alongside him. We have violently different perspectives <laughs> on politics and things but I love him and I want to continue the relationship next to him. And if that was something funny that he needed to see so that we can continue to walk alongside each other and I could continue offering my diverse perspective, then I'll do it. I know some of you are thinking I can never do it. That's fine. You don't have to. That's just how I do it. Understanding that seeing someone is more important than teaching or following someone. Seeing them. How do you see them? How do we see somebody? You have to walk alongside them. Teaching somebody, more than likely we're walking ahead of them. Following somebody, obviously you're walking behind them. But seeing somebody, you have to be right next to them. If you want to look them in the eyes so you can turn side to side, have to walk beside them. You do know that most children's vitamins have tons of sugar inside of them. Well, I know one vitamin that doesn't, that is going to help your kids grow into healthy adults, and that is Haya. Listen, Haya are kids' vitamins, okay? So I don't take them, but I've tasted them, and I know what they taste like. So listen, I don't take them daily, but I know that your kids are going to love to take them. This is what I love about them, okay? They're formulated with the help of nutritional experts, and Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, and then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals. That's so good. They're non-GMO, they're vegan, they're dairy-free, they're allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and all the other free things you don't want your kids to have. I love that Haya is partnered with us because I know how many of you need vitamins for your kids. Now listen, the same multivitamin that more than a million kids and parents love are now available for all of your Barbie-loving kids in Barbie Pink with a limited edition Barbie unboxing experience, including Barbie bottles and Barbie stickers. I recommend checking them out. 
because they are incredible. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamins. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash Human Hope. This deal is not available on the regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash Human Hope and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. When it first came time for Carlos to sell something on the internet, I went straight to Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. And I've sold so far at every stage of my business. I'm now at the more complicated stage than I even have time for, and Shopify is still what powers my online store. You guys love the don't stand on issues walk with people t-shirt. It's sold to you by Shopify. If you love the process, that was Shopify. Shopify, they literally have extensive help resources that are there to support your success every step of the way. I've seen my team reach out to Shopify and within minutes, they've got their answers, right? Businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Carlos. All lowercase, please. Go to shopify.com slash Carlos now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash Carlos. Number three, under how do we walk alongside? Sometimes walking alongside someone simply means choosing not to engage online about certain topics, but do it in person. That's a big one. You've got somebody that you know that it's real easy to type in their DMs. You know what? Instead of typing in their DMs, DM say, hey, how about coffee? Why do most people not do that? Because we actually don't want to have conversations. We just want to prove a point or state our opinion. Conversations are gone. And last, listen to each other's stories and perspectives. Everyone gets a chance to share and everyone's contributions are valuable. Actually, like when you're going to have a conversation with somebody um, about something that may be divisive, 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 I, I think you should bring this up. Hey, listen, we, we're going to walk alongside each other with this and actually start, actually kind of use this as a way to explain. If you're a teacher, use this as a way to explain in your classroom. If you're um, a manager, and even if it's not like, like, um, like political things, even if it's just something people disagree with internally in a company, use this. Hey, we're going to walk alongside each other with this. And this is what it looks like to walk ahead. We're not going to do that. This is what it looks like to walk behind. We're not going to do that. No, everybody is going to be involved in the conversation. Everybody's going to speak. Nobody gets to, to walk behind. We're going to walk alongside. And also nobody's going to take over and start pointing fingers and saying, this is the way, because that's walking ahead. We're going to walk with, we're going to walk alongside. I don't know. I think you could use these three things. I think it's helpful. Listen, there's some caveats, right? There are times in every relationship where someone ends up leading and someone ends up following. I understand that. That's okay. But be wary of this being the case all the time. If you're always the one out in front, you're talking too much, you're walking in front too much. For some things in my life, I walk in front a lot because I, you know, this next book that's coming out, I don't know anybody else that has, I don't know, I mean, there are people, but that, that has not looked at a screen for seven weeks and experienced all of the beauty of humanity that we've forgotten about. I get to walk ahead as I'm leading these conversations, but I also get to ask questions that bring people up to, up to where I'm at or slow me down. Be like, hey, what do you think? It's the second I say, what do you think? Our pace is equally in. So understand that that's a caveat, okay? Just be wary of you leading all the time or following all the time. Number two, if you're not in a relationship with someone, like say you're engaging in discourse online, be mindful that you're not carrying a superiority complex with you, okay? You don't know anything about the other person online. You really don't. So like you may know things about uh, what you believe about a certain issue, but you don't know anything about them. And so if you don't know anything about them, then you don't know anything about their story. And if you don't know anything about their story, then that's a huge blind spot in the conversation. So remember, their experience, level of expertise, personal ties to the topic, all of those things. And like just doing a quick sweep of their account does not paint a full picture. The amount of people that will just find something that I've written or something, you know, a post I, I had and, and, you know, take a photo of that and then send DM it to me. Oh, a great example. I spoke at a church in um, Florida last year and the, the pastor 
called me um, when I was on my way there and said, hey, listen, we're having a, um, we're having a church-wide meeting that some of the members have called because they've taken screen captures of some things that you wrote on your Twitter account in 2020 that you said about Trump um, and they don't want you to preach here. And I was like, oh, well, can you send me the screen captures? Um, and there were screen captures of him saying things that now, hindsight, all of my conservative friends would have been like, yeah, he shouldn't have said that. Um, but I, I wasn't calling him names. I wasn't being rude. I just obviously was um, leaning in a different direction, politically speaking, than they wanted somebody on their stage. So <laughs> so they took these screen captures, sent it to the pastor. A couple of people left the church. I'm, this is dead. I'm dead serious. I'm not lying right now. Left the church because I went, because uh, I spoke there. Many of the people stayed. And so that morning when I spoke, after I spoke, I had so many of those people that were like, listen, we didn't want you to come. Um, but we're so grateful that you came. That was an amazing message. You didn't say anything political. Of course, I'm not going to say anything political. I'm on a church. I'm a guest at your church. I'm just going to talk about Jesus. Don't get me fired up. I haven't shared that with anybody. Don't go looking for that church. It's actually an incredible church, an incredible pastor. Um, actually, maybe I should tell you the church so that you can all go there. It's one of the one of my favorite churches in, uh, where was I? It's in Tampa-ish area. Great church. And then again, remember, don't have a savior complex. Check yourself. We don't befriend people with the intent to change them or better them, but we befriend people to learn from them and walk alongside them. You got to be a pace setter. Okay, I'm a pace setter. I'm a pace setter on um, when I'm not having conversations when I'm teaching. I'm a pace setter, right? I'm one of the people with the marathon sign saying, hey, if you want to run at my pace, Come on, this is the pace that we're running at. If it feels good for you, and there's a lot of people on Instagram that are, um, or on this podcast that are running at my pace, but I'm gonna come alongside some people that aren't running at my pace. So that's the moment in conversations that I've got to learn to walk alongside, not in front of, but alongside. How's that for you? That was a little faster than last week. I'm trying to slow to, to keep these things at 30-ish minutes. Carlos Whitaker Podcast, Familia. Take that. Next week, hang on, Dr. Delight, we need you back. There you are. Next week, we're doing the next pillar of Don't Stand on Issues, Walk with People, which is we chase civility, chase, not silence. Hey, that means we're going to talk next week about how do, and when we do speak about something that we care about. How do we speak that way? Like, how do we do it? I'm going to give you some advice next week. It's going to be really helpful. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Carlos Whitaker podcast. Please make sure that you are following the podcast and also very helpful. And I believe it's going to really help you because I unpack these things in my next book in different ways because I had to do these things. I didn't have a phone. Please pre-order my book, Reconnected. If you guys wouldn't mind, if you haven't pre-ordered the book, it is super helpful um, if you pre-order the book, I'm going to send you right now a the intro and chapter one of my book. I'm also going to send you a journaling guide the week the book comes out. And I'm going to send you a 10-minute clip of the documentary, Reconnected. That's coming out a month after the book comes out. Super helpful. So if you're listening to this right now going like, oh, you know what? I've been thinking about pre-ordering the book. Go do it. Super helpful for an author like me. We'll see you next week on another episode of the Carlos Whitaker Podcast. One, two, three, break it down now. Uh.